Hi folks and welcome to the seventh set of video lectures for the geodynamics course on the topic of heat conduction and heat production. And in our first video lecture on this topic we're going to talk about the importance of heat. There are two goals for the lecture. The first is to basically make our case for why heat transfer is important and why you should understand that uh, as it relates to geodynamics. And secondly, we'll look at some of the different heat transfer mechanisms that apply to the lithosphere. So, why should we talk about heat transfer? Why should we care about this? It goes beyond looking at pretty pictures like this of uh, hot spring pools and things like that in uh, Yellowstone National Park in the western United States. Certainly a beautiful thing to look at. But why should we care about that in the context of geodynamics? Well, you could make an argument, and I think a pretty good one, that the dynamics of the Earth are controlled essentially by gravity and thermal processes. And you might even argue that thermal processes and heat transfer are more important than gravity. The question for you is why? Why do you think that thermal processes might be considered more important than gravitational processes? So go ahead and pause the video, think about that for a second, and come back when you have an idea. All right, well, what did you come up with? Why do you think heat transfer matters? Why is it more important, potentially, than gravity? Well, essentially, the thinking, in my mind, goes like this. There's not necessarily a very clear, well-defined answer. But in the absence of things like mantle convection, our planet would be a completely different place. If we didn't have relatively warm convection cells where material is rising up toward the surface, we wouldn't be forming new oceanic lithosphere. And so we would have plates that potentially would subduct, but nothing would ever rejuvenate to form new um, oceanic plates, and the planet would essentially eventually die out. And, uh, and, and that awaits the fate of the Earth many, uh, many years down the road. But... Uh, essentially, a big part of plate tectonics is driven by mantle convection and by processes related to heat transfer. So, it's something we should definitely be trying to understand. Why do we want to talk about that now in the course? Well, we started talking about elasticity, we've talked about stress and strain, but most rock properties, or many properties of rocks, are largely a function of temperature. And so, the the conditions that determine whether rocks will be faulted or deform in a brittle manner versus folding or deforming in a viscous manner. It's basically a function of temperature. If the rocks get warm enough, they'll begin to flow. Um, and that's obviously quite important deeper in the crust of the earth uh, compared to the faulting that would take place at surface. Now we're going to look at faulting and we're going to look at folding and ductile deformation in some of the coming lectures. So we have to first understand a little bit about heat transfer before we can do that. Another example of why this is important is uh, something like the effects of partial melt on rock strength. So the plot over here on the left side shows something that's just called a melt fraction. So you could think of this over at zero as being rock that has no melt, and then over at one is rock that's completely melted. And what you can see here in this gray region called the MCT is a major decrease in the aggregate strength of the total strength of the rock. Um, it loses about, I don't know, 80 to 90 percent of its strength within this gray area where we have basically crossed into what's called. Um, the melt connectivity threshold. So beyond this point, melt can be interconnected within the rock and the strength drops dramatically within that range. Okay, there is a very clear relationship in this case between temperature, which is going to control how much melt is present, and rock strength, which is going to deform or determine how the rock will deform. Very clear example of the importance of heat transfer in that case. Now, when we talk about heat transfer in the lithosphere, we'll talk about basically three different processes. There's heat conduction, and heat advection, and then heat production. Um, and so the top two are the thermal processes that are involved in heat transfer. The third one is basically a way of producing heat um, 
and so it's not necessarily a heat transfer process. But in the case of heat conduction, this is uh, perhaps familiar to you also as uh, thermal diffusion. It's the diffusion or diffusive heat transfer uh, by kinetic atomic or molecular interactions. These are atoms banging into one another within a solid and transferring heat as a result of that. Um, and it's also known here as thermal diffusion. Now in contrast, advection is something where we have transfer of heat by the physical movement of molecules or atoms within a material. So this is essentially like taking um, a pluton somewhere within the Earth and moving it as it flows up into a shallower part of the crust that would advect heat, that would physically transport the heat within the material as it flows. So when we use the word advection, we're talking about a type of convection, and it's mostly applied to heat transfer in solid materials. As I noted already, the heat production is not really a heat transfer process, but uh, a source of heat, and there are different sources of heat, including radiogenic heat production, which is probably the most commonly considered, uh, particularly in cases like where we are here in a shield setting, heat production is very important. But there's also frictional sources of heat that can result from fault slip um, or chemical reactions and phase transitions that can uh, release or consume um, heat. Now our focus in this lecture is going to be about heat conduction and heat production. This is actually the focus in this whole lecture set. Okay, so that was our introduction. It was short and sweet. And now it's time to take your quiz and see what you've picked up before we continue on to the topic of heat conduction.